So in my quest for the perfect Arduino USB rubber ducky, I've looked at quite a few different solutions. If you haven't been following them, I'll leave a link in the description down below to a playlist. But anyhow, this is my latest creation. It's probably as bare bones as you're going to get. It has pretty much all the same functionality as my previous projects, the uh, Arduino Pro Micro USB rubber ducky thing, which has a micro SD reader and a set of dip switches. So here we have an 80 mega 32U4 breakout board. It looks like there's a lot going on here, but it's essentially just a chip on a board with a few connectors to make it breadboard compatible. It's the same microcontroller that the Arduino Pro Micro uses, so that's why I'm using it. Though the board itself is actually quite pricey. It costs about 10 pounds shipped. Though, funny thing is, uh, these when I do get around to making a PCB version of this, which I'm sure I will, I'll probably just order a load of these Pro Micros from China and pull the chip off them because this is about $3, this whole um, solution. And the chip itself in the UK is, well, more than $3. So it's uh, cheaper to buy the whole Pro Micro and just take the chip off it than to buy the chip by itself in the UK. Plus you get the Arduino, Pro, uh, the Arduino bootloader pre-installed on the chip. So that's a nice bonus and quite convenient. So next we have the micro SD reader. So since I only have one micro SD breakout board and it's kind of been butchered for this, I thought I'd Frankenstein my own together. So it's a micro SD to SD adapter, but with a few legs soldered on. These pids, pads uh, by the sides are not in use, so that makes it a little easier. Um, so while that does make it a little bit, well, you, you might think it makes it cheaper and easier because I don't have to use a breakout board, it does throw up a few problems. So this micro SD runs at three, well, all micro SD cards run at 3.3 volts, whereas the whole boards, the whole um, 80 mega 32U4 chip runs at five volts. So they can't really talk to each other without blowing one of them up. So I had to uh, make a few changes. So we've got the voltage regulator, which gives me a nice 3.3 volts. But then of course, this is still running at 3.3 volts. So I've had to use a, what's this called? A, logic level shifter converter translator, depending on who you ask. So this converts the 3.3 volts data lines to 5.5 volts and vice versa. So these two things can talk to each other without uh, killing each other. Though funny thing is this, uh, I didn't have a spare voltage regulator handy. So I've had to pull it off my self-destructing SSD uh, project, which I think you can see the three. Yeah, I just wiggled it until it fell off and I've had to uh, solder some new legs to it to give it a new lease of life. But hey, it works. So next we have the 16 megahertz crystal and a few capacitors to make everything work nicely. And a set of dip switches because they fit on the board, so why the hell not? And we have a capacitor here just to make things work nicely because the data sheet told me to put it in. And for the USB connector, I'm using just a normal USB cable, but I've split it to give me the four separate lines, the data positive, negative, five volts and ground. So I've um, split that and soldered on some jumper wires and there. Color coders, that's nice. And the data lines run through a couple of resistors till they go to the board. So on the chip, I've loaded my Duckwino project, which incidentally I've done a whole video on. So I'll put the link in the description for that. So how that works pretty much is I've got a few scripts on the micro SD card, which is in here. Then I can choose the uh, script I want using the dip switches. So when this is plugged in via USB, uh, this will read the scripts off the S micro SD card and interpret it and then run it essentially. So if I, well, it's on the right one. Yep, selected. So if I plug it in, I'll show you that it does actually work. So let's see if it does anything profound if my tripod will cooperate. So I'll point it up over here. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it works. <laughs> that, that wasn't funny. I don't know why I did that. Anyway. Now this obviously isn't practical as it's quite large. However, I'm going to be making a PCB version of this pretty soon, as soon as I get my head around it all. So by the end, it should fit onto a small board quite nicely. I do have some other ideas on what I'm gonna add to this to make it even more brutal, though you're gonna to have to wait for those in a later video. So make sure you hit that sub button so you don't miss it. I do know some other people are making their own PCB versions of this. However, I want to make my own because it looks quite fun and the end result should be pretty cool. And plus I can make a couple of videos on it. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video at least mildly interesting. If you liked it, remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Satonic for more frequent updates and stay tuned for more updates to this project and other hacking videos.